one of the most common questions I get is how do you edit your Insta360 X5 videos? So I'm gonna do a tutorial today on exactly how I do it. This is for the Insta360 X5, and we're gonna be using the desktop Insta360 Studio. We'll jump straight into this, I'll share my screen, and I'll show you exactly my workflow, how I get the best quality videos, and just how to reframe in general. So first of all, I'm gonna be using this video for YouTube. So I have 16 by nine selected here, and you can change this to nine by 16 if you wanna do social media for Instagram Reels, for example, but I'm gonna show you this with 16 by nine. And then what we're gonna do, and this is what I always like doing, when you're filming action sports and you want the camera to automatically, or the system to automatically follow where the camera is pointing, then you wanna use something here underneath stabilization type called tilt recovery. And tilt recovery, when you turn it on, it will rotate your footage to start with, but we're gonna edit this in a second. But what it'll do is it will follow naturally where the camera lens is pointing. So for action sports, skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, this is really cool, it's super natural. Because previous to this, we would use direction lock and it was a nightmare. So go to the start of your clip, I'm gonna add a keyframe, command and K, and then I'm gonna roll my angle to probably, it's probably gonna be about 90 degrees. And then it's a bit zoomed in, so I'm gonna use my two fingers, I'm gonna zoom out, use my field of view here. I'm probably gonna go out to maybe one, 115. Now you'll notice here in the top left corner, we've got this horrendous black mark. This is like my helmet. I don't want that in there. So what we do is we just need to bring this distortion down. So you can play around with this again for your footage. This is what I do. And I generally go for about 0.25. And then generally just you want to just fine tweak these controls to really fine tune the angle of your video. Now this is a bit of trial and error as you'll see in a second, but once you get this nailed, your editing is gonna be super quick. So I'm gonna play this back now and just show you what this looks like. So. Okay, it's not doing what we want just yet, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna now add a keyframe here. So for me right now, this is still too tight. We need to zoom out a bit more. So I'm gonna add a keyframe. I'm going to zoom out a bit more and I'm probably going to just drop this panel down a bit and I'm trying to find my ideal frame and this will all make sense in a second. So you'll see tilt recovery now will start doing its thing, it'll start naturally moving as you watch. Okay, so that's great. So now what we wanna do, we wanna transfer these um, numbers to our first keyframe. So we wanna go 124.8, 125 even. We've got 0 0.24, 99.2 on the roll. minus 0 0.9 uh, and 0 0.6. Now, next step is super important. We want to delete this key, the, the keyframe here that we put in, because if we leave this in, it will transition between the two keyframes and look really strange. So we delete this keyframe. Now let's watch the beginning again. And this should be more in line with what we want. Perfect. And you don't need to do any more keyframes for your video or anything like that. Just one keyframe is all it takes. And then when you export your video, go to export at the top right corner. And generally for YouTube, this is what I would do. So you select all your file parameters where you want to save the video. And then bitrate, don't just skyrocket this to 200 because the file size would be ginormous. What I generally go for with YouTube is a bitrate between 80 and 120. Because YouTube still compresses your videos to an extent. So if you upload a super high quality video, that's really big file size, it will compress it slightly just to work with the system. Uh, encoding format, 
I sometimes use ProRes 422 on smaller video files, but usually I'll just use H.264. Uh, if you go ProRes 422, the file size just just is astronomically big, and and I don't have enough space on my computer for that. But H.264 is fine. Leave the resolution as it is, and then click Start Export, and that is how I reframe my 360 videos in 360 Studio. Hopefully that was useful. Make sure you go and grab my video settings cheat sheet up here. There'll be a link below to that. That's got all my best settings for every action camera in there. You just literally plug and play. For any questions, let me know below and I'll see you in the next video.